Toast Bites. Chomp. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Toast Bites, where we take a look at some of the awesome indie games I've played that didn't get a standalone video on my channel. As always, a link to each game is in the description, and if you're on a supported device or using the YouTube app, you can check out more episodes of Toast Bites by clicking the card icon above. Let's get into it! Number 1 Consortium The Tower, a follow-up to Consortium, is a first-person sci-fi shooter that makes me wonder what budget the developers are working with, because it's one of the most polished yet detailed indie games I've played in a long time. Boasting a role-playing experience that excels at player freedom, the production quality is relatively high, and the ability to explore your environment as well as tackle missions with a variety of choices is impressive. It's definitely a more objective-based shooter than a mow down with plenty of great dialogue to wade through and an interesting mythos, at least coming from someone who never played the original game. I was as delighted by the subtle world-building evident throughout as I was by the core mechanics, even though I wasn't always sure if things were working as intended. With a semi-traditional drag-and-drop inventory style and a clever system for equipment repairs, some elements were familiar and intuitive, while others were just a pleasant surprise, like the ability to recycle objects in the environment to replenish energy, custom-fit dozens of equipment upgrades to match your playstyle, and explore the tower in ways that feel limitless thanks to the fast and fluid movements of the freefall suit and a lack of invisible walls. One major highlight is choice, because that's where Consortium the Tower really shines. Not only is it rich with lore to discover, but the handling of the role-playing elements is phenomenal. The story is non-linear, so you can trigger different paths and events in whatever order you like, and the game will remember what you've done, shaping the rest of the narrative around it. There are also story elements unique to players who are new to the series, as well as elements you'll only be presented with if you play the original game, which you can import and continue playing from seamlessly. There are even events triggered by playtime, ensuring that everyone truly has a singular experience tailored to them, influenced directly by the effort they've put into the game. And if you're hankering for a good old-fashioned chat, there are hundreds of lines of fully voiced dialogue to interact with, delivered by noticeably professional talent, including Mark Mir, who you may remember as Commander Shepard from Mass Effect. Best of all, the dialogue really matters. Even the random NPCs serve a purpose, many with backstories of their own that help mold your relationship with various individuals and factions, including your own organization. The ability to choose how you play is so well implemented here that you can literally finish the game without shooting anyone at all based just on how you interact with the world and the characters in it. It's certainly a strange setting for a passive playthrough, but it works. And there's so much content packed into this game, from the variety of weapons to the freshness of the locale, I just can't cover it all, so you'd be better off checking out the developer's notes for a list of everything this gem has to offer. In short, Consortium the Tower isn't perfect, but it's a thoughtful, well-made blast that's pretty darn close. I played the demo on Steam, and I strongly recommend giving it a go if you're not sure about shelling out for the full game, which released in Early Access earlier this fall. I'd even go so far as to say you should just buy it if you can afford it, because it'd be a real shame to miss out on this one if you're into games of this type that manage to elevate the type. Number 2 Raji, an ancient epic, is an action-adventure set in ancient India. You play as the titular character Raji, a young girl chosen by the gods to face off against evil while on a mission to save her brother, and the game shows a lot of promise. The controls are simplistic, with an emphasis on combat, and the gameplay seems to center around fighting waves of enemies with a scale and difficulty that makes each area more challenging than the last. The enemies themselves are well designed, each with unique behaviors and attacks that demand just enough strategy to defy the button masher label, and there are more powerful versions of each enemy, as their abilities and defenses cater to their rank. The locations are linear, but they don't feel confined as you explore, thanks in part to the stunning vistas, which are beautifully hand-painted, lending a richness to the haunting environments and structures inspired by India's medieval architecture. From the character and weapon design to the music and sound, Raji is a walk through Hindu and Bali mythology, which many of us have never experienced in mainstream fare. Yet it reminds me a lot of the mainstream games I enjoyed in the early 2000s. That's not to say that it feels dated, what it feels is familiar, like a throwback to endearing titles that gamers my age remember fondly. Things like Prince of Persia Sands of Time, which comes to mind not because it's set on the same side of the world, but because the gameplay offers a similar sense of scope. All of that said, the demo was kinda rough. Movement felt a bit sluggish, attacks failed to land with consistent accuracy, and some enemies clipped through the map or hopped out of bounds, making them unreachable. 
That was especially annoying since the demo relies heavily on segments where the path forward is blocked until you defeat all of the enemies it spawned. And for the sake of momentum, I hope the full game spreads those barrier battles out more thoughtfully. Regardless, I attribute all of that to a game that's unfinished, and can see well past that to the fantastic bones underneath. The appeal is there, but with combat so reliant on responsiveness and fluid animations, optimization is paramount, nailing that sweet spot where everything feels as great as it looks and vice versa. Now, there are puzzles to solve, gods to align with, and upgrades to be had, and while there's definitely a backstory here, there were no real story elements in the demo, which suggests that the game likely isn't narrative-driven. So if you're looking for something with less fighting and more talking, Raji may not be for you. But if attractive combat in a lush world of lore is your cup of Darjeeling tea, try the demo for yourself. Raji was a top pick on Kickstarter, and while they didn't meet their goal, they're not abandoning the game and could use all the support they can get to relaunch with success. Number 3 Spectrum Break is a physics-based puzzle game, though I prefer the developer's description of zero-gravity rainbow boarding. The game is crazy simple. You speed along hitting blocks or knocking them into one another to light them up in a burst of color and sound, and man is it satisfying. There isn't much to say about this one because there isn't much more to it, but trust me, it's one of those small games you just want to sit back and play at the end of a long day because it feels good. And with controller support, you can kick the keyboard to the curb if you'd rather thumb your way to peace and tranquility. The full game won't be out until next year, and the prototype available to play now only features one very quick level. I still recommend trying it out, especially if you need to unwind. I guarantee it'll leave you wanting more. Number 4 a lot of the titles I feature in Toast Bites are in early access or upcoming releases, but Broken Puppet is a tiny indie game that came out a couple of years ago. Oddly enough, you play as a broken puppet traveling through a dark and whimsical theater to regain her former glory and oust the one who took her place. What's unique about this game, besides the colorfully semi-macabre aesthetic and the gorgeous character design, is the core mechanic of using threaded needles to solve puzzles and traverse the environment. You know those games where you get a grappling hook and think, sweet, can I shoot it over there? Only to try and discover, while plummeting to your death, that you can only use the hook in certain places? Well, Broken Puppet is a refreshing departure from those limitations by allowing you to attach your needles to literally anything. And the incredible part is that it's all physics-based, where the length, tension, angle, and timed release of multiple threads all come together to manipulate your surroundings in fun and clever ways. The story is pretty fun too, and I enjoyed the off-kilter music and atmosphere. There's even a boss battle that's fairly well done. You can download Broken Puppet for free on Game Jolt right now, and I may sound like a broken record here, but I highly recommend it. It's a fantastic example of how physics-based mechanics can add freedom and strategy in a thoughtful way, rather than being used as a means for comic relief. I finished the game in about an hour, and it was certainly an unexpected treat. Number 5. Spinortality is a management game. Think Plague Inc., only instead of infecting the world with deadly viruses and bacteria, you're a mega corporation in a cyberpunk inspired near future seeking to take over the world and also achieve immortality. Sounds pretty straightforward, I know, but there is nothing simple about this game. The level of thought and detail put into the growing of a global entity and the balance of resources, politics, and power required is commendable here. Even better is the way you go about it. You can research an array of realistic products and technologies to sell, marketing them to various nations according to culture, which directly impacts how well your products perform. With cultures weighed on a scale of attributes like materialism versus spirituality and xenophobia versus multiculturalism, deciding which campaigns will work best where is fairly intuitive, though the game will offer hints at a price. The campaigns themselves are hilarious, and the consequences of your failures and successes are pretty spot on. You can also employ political strategies, whether cozying up to parties that facilitate deregulation in your target industries, or weakening influential opposition with propaganda, corporate espionage, and straight-up murder. Every choice has an impact on your public image, financial standing, and political clout. Beyond that, 
all the standard mechanics you'd expect are here, like managing employees and funds, triggered events, and turn-based goals, as well as metrics that are more in-depth, like tracking the level of corruption within your corporation, which can be lowered by conducting an internal investigation. The highlight is how all the various elements in the game work together in ways that make utter sense from both a real-life and gameplay perspective. There's no end to the humorous yet mindful social commentary and how beautifully it translates into an eerily plausible experience. Best of all, unlike Plague Inc., which arguably requires you to do a very terrible thing in order to win, Spinortality allows you the freedom to choose how you want to achieve your success. You can be a benevolent corporation, pursuing social, technological, and governmental reforms that improve the quality of life across the globe. Or you can be every science fiction author's worst nightmare, an evil corporation that puts greed and an unquenchable thirst for world dominance ahead of humanity. There are four types of long-term victories you can aim for, as well as short and medium-term goals that contribute to each path. Overall, Spinortality is a clever take on the strategy genre, and a predictably satisfying time sink with a sleek UI and an even sleeker examination of progress and power. It should also be pointed out that it's primarily the work of a single developer. You can tell how much effort he's put into it, and I can't begin to cover it all in this video. You can play the demo now on Itch.io, and check out the Kickstarter campaign, which recently met its goal. The demo is a great introduction to the game, and I'm curious to know how you fare in the quest for global domination. Now, before I go, here are a few bonus mentions you should definitely check out. Bonus Games That's it for this episode of Toast Bites. If you like these games, or hated them, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I'll be back soon with a peek at even more great games I played, but until then, see you on the plate!